Welcome to German history with a German accent. My name is Wolf, W-O-L-F, just like the animal. And in today's video, I'm, sp I'm speaking about Erich von Falkenhayn. As always, if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like and subscribe button and don't forget to drop me a comment below. Erich Georg Sebastian Anton von Falkenhayn was born on September 11th, 1861 in Burg Belchau, near Graudenz in West Prussia. West Prussia was awarded to the newly found Poland after the First World War in accordance with the Treaty of Versailles. He was born as son of Fedor and Franziska von Falkenhayn. At the age of 11, Erich von Falkenhayn joined the Prussian cadet corps in Köln. He also spent three years in Großlichterfelde. In April 1880, von Falkenhayn joined the Prussian army as Seconde Leutnant in the Oldenburgischen Infantry Regiment No. 91. After Erich von Falkenhayn attended the War Academy in Berlin, he joined the Greater General Staff in March 1891. Three years later, he served in the General Staff of the 9th Army Corps and became the com company commander of the Infantry Regiment von Borke in December 1895. Von Falkenhayn took a leave of absence in the following year and moved to China as a military advisor. In this position, he established a military school after the Prussian model. In the year 1898, he transferred into the 3rd Sea Battalion, ranked as a Hauptmann in Kiachu, which at that time was a German territory in China, which had been leased by the German Empire. In the following year, now ranked as a Major, he was transferred back into the Prussian army and saw action during the Boxer Rebellion in the year 1900 as a staff officer in the East Asian Expedition Corps. Erich von Falkenhayn returned to Germany after he spent time in Manchuria and Korea. He became the battalion commander for the Braunschweigisches Infantry Regiment No. 92 in the year 1903. Only three years later, he was once again transferred into the Greater General Staff in Berlin, now holding the rank of Oberstleutnant. In February 1912, Erich von Falkenhayn became the Chief of Staff of the 4th Army Corps in Magdeburg. And only two months later, he was promoted to the rank of Generalmajor. In the following year, von Falkenhayn was named the Prussian Minister of War and was promoted to the rank of Generalleutnant. In this position, it was his duty to oversee the upgrading of the armament of the army. By the end of 1913 and the beginning of the year 1914, Erich von Falkenhayn spoke in the German Reichstag, where he backed up behavior of the Prussian soldiers in Elsass-Lorraine, whom had committed cr criminal acts against the civilians in Saarbrücken to suppress protests against them. These protests were caused by a Prussian officer whom had insulted civilians. After the Austrian Archduke Franz Ferdinand had been assassinated in July 1914, Erich von Falkenhayn lobbied for the war with Kaiser Wilhelm II. In September of the same year, Erich von Falkenhayn replaced Helmut von Moltke the Younger as chief of the general staff. When von Falkenhayn took over command, he was able to reorganize the situation and attempted to outflank the British and French troops, which would later be known as the Race to the Sea. This strategy didn't lead to success and resulted in the end of the Movement War and the beginning of the trench warfare on the Western Theater. In November of the year 1914, shocked after the First Battle of Ypres, Erich von Falkenhayn realized that a total victory on the battlefield was no longer achievable. He then approached the German Chancellor, Theobald von bethmann holweg to end the war on a negotiating table. It was Erich von Falkenhayn's opinion that the Allies had a superior amount of manpower as well as supply and would be able to slowly deplete the German Empire. In his strategy, he wanted to break up the coalition of the Triple Entente and make a separate peace with one enemy. He thought Russia was the most likely one. 
von Falkenhayn anticipated that France wouldn't continue fighting without Russia. Afterwards, he wanted to battle the United Kingdom by naval warfare to starve the island nation. But Erich von Falkenhayn did not find enough supporters for his thoughts. In January 1915, Erich von Falkenhayn was replaced as the Prussian Minister of War by Adolf Wild von Hohenborn, and he was promoted to the rank of General der Infanterie. In the following month, he was also awarded the Pour le Merite. Check out the video I made about it by clicking the little eye on the top right of this video. Von Falkenheim got into conflicts with Paul von Hindenburg and Erich Ludendorff, whom wanted to achieve a giant encirclement in the Eastern Theater, which von Falkenheim didn't believe was doable with the available military force without weakening the Western Front too much, and also didn't think it was favorable from a political point of view. After the failed Battle of Verdun in the year 1916, where German troops suffered massive losses, the trust in Erich von Falkenhayn was lost. And after a meeting between Paul von Hindenburg and the German Emperor was arranged, Erich von Falkenhayn asked for his dismissal as the Chief of General Staff, which was granted in August 1916. In the following month, he took over command of the newly put together Ninth Army fighting in Romania, where he, together with August von Mackensen, conquered the capital Bucharest. In mid July 1917, Erich von Falkenhayn took over command of the Ottoman Army Group F, tasked to reconquer the city of Baghdad, which had been captured by British forces, but was unable to realize this operation. As an Ottoman marshal, he lost the city of Jerusalem in December 1917. After this loss, he requested his dismissal and was sent back to, German, to the German Empire. During his time serving in Palestine, he successfully avoided the deportation of Jews who were considered a danger to the Ottoman Empire by some groups. He experienced the end of the First World War as a commander of the 10th Army in West Russia. In February 1919, Erich von Falkenheim had left the army due to kidney, kidney disease. He died near Potsdam on April 8, in the year 1922, at the age of 60. Thank you so much for watching.